Hello everybody, Lyle at CNS Corvettes in Sarasota, Florida, continuing our list of what the best C3's years of production are to be looking for if you're in the market to buy one. We've already done part one, which covered 68 to 72, when uh, we've done part two, which covered 73 to 77. Now we're moving on to the last years of the C3, 78 through 82. Uh, I think one of the things that really is the hallmark of this group of cars is that there were a lot of special editions, and it was one of the first times that they'd really done that. Uh, you had in 78, heck, you had two special editions. You had the silver anniversary cars that had the two-tone silver paint job. Uh, you also had the pace car, the 1978 Indianapolis 500 pace car, black and silver, very iconic. Anybody my age knows that car because that was the coolest car to see on the street because it actually had Aero spoiler on the front, spoiler on the back, the nice wide tires with the red stripes on the rims. It was a super cool car. They were only going to make one per Chevy dealer, but the demand was so high they ended up making like, I don't know, 10 per Chevy dealer. They were everywhere. And there's still a lot of them out there today. Uh, the 78 and the 79 are very similar cars. There's not a whole lot of difference. Uh, there were some interior changes from 77 that remained in the car all the way through the end of production in 82. Uh, most notably, the biggest difference was on the pace car in 78, they introduced the new uh, fiberglass bucket seats that would run from be standard issue 79 through 82. They were only in the pace car in 78. But these provided so much more support and so much more overall comfort than what we call the flat back seats that had been in use since 68, some variation of it since 68. These were really supportive. They actually had bolsters that held you in place, much more luxurious looking and feeling seats. So the 78 and the 79, other than the special editions, again, not great power good cruising cars. 79, I think, is still the highest year production uh, for any uh, Corvette year. I think they made 57 or 59,000 of them this year. So there's still plenty of them around. If you want something fun to drive on the weekend and you're not worried about drag racing anybody, the 78 and the 79 are both good choices. Uh, if you can get your hands on a nice silver anniversary car or a nice pace car for a reasonable price, you can probably expect those cars to hold their value at the very least maybe go up in the coming five to 10 years. Moving on to 80. 80 is an interesting year because they went to the deep chin front fascia. They had the integrated spoiler in the back. For people my age, uh, I think the 80 had the coolest body style of any of those cars because it looked really exotic. It looked really muscular. It looked really low to the ground and aggressive. Uh, again, uh, in 80, you aren't making much power at all. Uh, the four speed was still available, which was cool. At least it gave it, you know, if you were doing the shifting yourself, you get a little bit of uh, get up and go out of the car, even though it wasn't going to be winning any major races. Uh, interior carried over from 78, 79, so no big changes there. Uh, that leads us, oh, 80, last year without any kind of computer control. And that's important. Regardless of whether you're going to keep this car original or you plan on doing some performance upgrades like a new engine or an LS conversion, not having computer control still makes that car mechanical. You can fix virtually anything that's wrong on it with a wrench. Moving into 81, we still have a carbureted car, but that carburetor is controlled by a computer, a very ancient, very basic computer. Finding those computers, if they go bad, can be very difficult. So I try to, if I was gonna buy an 80 to an 82, I'm always gonna go with an 80 to avoid those computers. That doesn't mean there aren't nice 81s and 82s out there. 81 was kind of a split year. It was the last year of true carburation, uh, not a lot of power, which leads us into 82. 82 was the last year of C3 production, and they introduced the Crossfire injection, which was kind of a combination of carburation and fuel injection. Uh, up the power to 200 horses again, which at the time was a lot compared to what we've been dealing with, with since 75, but again, not a huge performance upgrade. The nice thing was, even though they eliminated the four-speed manual, you could get a four-speed automatic, which really did help not only with fuel mileage on a long trip at highway speeds, but because of the shorter first and second gears, it got you off the line quicker and made you feel like you were doing more. Collector edition in 1982, very iconic with that two-tone beige, or yeah, two-tone beige paint job with all the decals and the custom interior. Um, 
some people love it, some people hate it. The custom wheels, all that was really cool. If you can find a nice one, they're worth holding on to because it was also the only C3 that had an opening rear hatch. Any questions, feel free to give me a call. That pretty much ends up our review of what the best years are for C3 cars. Thank you for watching.